Your Excellency, you have the floor. Thank you uh, very much, Mr. President. Excellencies, friends, we are focusing on Sri Lanka at a time when the 30 year conflict, which has affected our country so negatively, has come to an end. Mr. President, I uh, heard a little while ago from the previous speaker about conflict zones and being given access to conflict zones when the conflict has ended. There's absolutely no issue in terms of giving access to our partners. We have given access and we will continue to give access to complement government efforts in looking after the, the needy and those who uh, need to be assisted in uh, various other ways. Mr. President, when terrorism, the most extremist of its kind, has been successfully eradicated, we are once again focusing on Sri Lanka in this special session today. Mr. President, when the biggest hostage situation the world had ever seen in recent times has been successfully resolved, and at a time when new challenges confront us in our quest for durable and sustainable peace, we are meeting in this room and focusing on Sri Lanka in order to agree on a way forward. Unfortunately, Mr. President, I did not uh, hear the High Commissioner in a statement referring to all this. The fact that one of the most ruthless terrorist organizations that the world has ever known has been eradicated. The fact, fact that the 30-year-old conflict has come to an end and we are in the process of addressing economic issues, social issues and political expectations. The fact that the biggest hostage crisis, as I mentioned earlier, the world has seen in modern times has been successfully resolved was unfortunately not mentioned. This is the context in which we would like our friends in this room to understand and appreciate the challenges that we are facing as a nation who has come out of this 30-year conflict. Mr. President, over 250,000 of our citizens who were held hostage by the LTT in the north were rescued by our forces and are being looked after and cared for as we speak. There was a reference a little while ago about lack of food. There was a reference a little while ago about starvation, about malnutrition, which is furthest from the truth. Today we have all of the UN agencies working side by side with government officials in each and every one of these camps. Today we have given access to 52 international non-governmental organizations and other non-governmental organizations to work side by side with government officials in complementing efforts of the government. My ministry, Mr. President, enjoys a mandate on the protection side of the government. I have not heard any one of the UN agencies, any one of these INGOs or NGOs telling us that there are people dying of malnutrition of starvation and there's a lack of food. So I would like uh, Mr. President to state for the record that uh, 250,000 of our citizens, of our people, are being looked after and cared for as we speak at the moment. And we will continue to show that commitment and we will continue to offer access and facilitate our partners in the international community to complement efforts of the government within a national framework. Mr. President, our objective, of course, is to resettle all our citizens in their homes in the shortest possible time. This is a decision that the people themselves must take. What we have to do is to ensure that the environment is created conducively created so that an informed choice can be made by the people themselves 
whether they want to go back to their homes or not. And until such time that that informed decision is made, we are committed to looking after our people, ensuring their well-being, and ensuring that we facilitate our friends in the international community to complement efforts of the government. Now, Mr. President, uh, nearly 900 surrenderies, 9,000 surrenderies, pardon me, 9,000 surrenderies and other identified recruits of the LTT will be put through a comprehensive rehabilitation program addressing their special needs, including ensuring increasing their employability so that reintegration into society is made much easier. Mr. President, we are working very closely with several UN organizations such as UNDP, UNICEF and ILO, as well as international organizations such as the International Organization for Migration, IOM, in this endeavor. My ministry has taken the in in initiative of preparing a national framework for the reintegration of ex-combatants, and this is not an initiative that we started after the war was over, after the conflict was over. We were preparing for the post-conflict era even before the LTT was completely eliminated. So this is the type of commitment, Mr. President, that uh, we have shown as a government and we will continue to show that government on behalf of our, uh, 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 that commitment on behalf of our people. Mr. President, with the eradication of terrorism, as we have known it to be, we are conscious of new challenges before us. The task of demining, infrastructure rehabilitation, the restoration of basic services need to be put in place before resettlement can commence, and then livelihood strategies to ensure that post-resettlement sustainability is ensured. It is not just a question of uh, taking shortcuts and uh, subjecting ourselves to pressures from certain quarters and saying, we are sick and tired of these pressures, we are going to take these people back to their homes. It's not so easy. These are once again our people. These are Sri Lankan citizens, and I must state for the record that we do care for them more than anyone else. And we are not going to take shortcuts. We are going to ensure that the demining is done. We are going to ensure that the infrastructure is put into place. We are going to ensure that the basic services are provided, and then all this information will be placed at the disposal of the people themselves, who can then take a decision whether they want to go back or not. And once they go back, Mr. President, their livelihood challenges will be also met, and we will assist them in ensuring that they get, get back on their own two feet. Mr. President, the government has, right throughout this difficult phase of liberating our people from terrorism, have never subscribed to the concept of a military solution as a final solution. We have always said that the only durable and lasting solution is a political process which addresses the socio-economic and political grievances and expectations of our citizens through a homegrown process acceptable to all sections of our multicultural society. Efforts in this direction, Mr. President, have already commenced. Mr. President, we see another important challenge, and that is to reach out to the Tamil diaspora, living in countries of some of our friends in this room, so that by way of process of dialogue and confidence building, we can embark on our own reunification process, reconciliation process, vital to ensuring never a repetition of we, or as we, uh, what we as a nation had to go through, Mr. President. Mr. President, we will continue to work with all of our friends in the international community. We will continue to engage, as we have done in the past, consistently with all regional and cross-regional groups in this Council. I'm sure the ambassadors, permanent representatives in this room will bear testimony to the fact that I have personally, every occasion when I have been in Geneva, taken the initiative 
of coming and addressing the regional groups and the cross-regional groups personally so that I can make myself available to any clarifications or questions that they might like to pose to me as a member of the government. And Mr. President, we will continue in our efforts to facilitate our bilateral and multilateral partners in complementing the efforts of the government in the multi-pronged strategies that we will put into place in the post-conflict era. This is what we must now engage in and not the naming and shaming, Mr. President. 